wise virgin from among the number of the prudent who went forth with lighted lamp to meet Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, we celebrate today the memorial of St. Rose Philippine Duchesne, a French religious sister who came to the United States of America, founded many schools, and worked here for over 20 years in the early 19th century. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God, who filled the heart of St. Rose Philippine Duchesne with charity and missionary zeal, and gave her the desire to make you known among all peoples. Grant us to follow her way and fill us with that same love and zeal to extend your kingdom to the ends of the earth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Maccabees. The officers of the king in charge of enforcing the apostasy came to the city of Modain to organize the sacrifices. Many of Israel joined them, but Mattathias and his sons gathered in a group apart. Then the officers of the king addressed Mattathias. You are a leader an honorable and great man in this city, supported by sons and kin. Come now, be the first to obey the king's command, as all the Gentiles and the men of Judah and those who are left in Jerusalem have done. Then you and your sons shall be numbered among the king's friends and shall be enriched with silver and gold and many gifts. But Mattathias answered in a loud voice, Although all the Gentiles in the king's realm obey him, so that each forsakes the religion of his fathers and consents to the king's orders, yet I and my sons and my kin will keep to the covenant of our fathers. God forbid that we should forsake the law and the commandments. We will not obey the words of the king, nor depart from our religion in the slightest degree. As he finished saying these words, a certain Jew came forward in the sight of all to offer a sacrifice on the altar in Modain according to the king's order. When Mattathias saw him, he was filled with zeal. His heart was moved and his just fury was aroused. He sprang forward and killed him upon the altar. At the same time, he also killed the messenger of the king who was forcing them to sacrifice, and he tore down the altar. Thus he showed his zeal for the law, just as Phineas did with Zimri, son of Salu. Then Mattathias went through the city shouting, Let everyone who is zealous for the law and who stands by the covenant follow after me. 
Thereupon, he fled to the mountains with his sons, leaving behind in the city all their possessions. Many who sought to live according to righteousness and religious custom went out into the desert to settle there. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. God the Lord has spoken and summoned the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. From Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Gather my faithful ones before me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens proclaim his justice, for God himself is the judge. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. Offer to God praise as your sacrifice, and fulfill your vows to the Most High. Then call upon me in time of distress. I will rescue you, and you shall glorify me. To the upright I will show the saving power. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus drew near Jerusalem, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If this day you only knew what makes for peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. For the days are coming upon you when your enemies will raise a palisade against you. They will encircle you and hem you in on all sides. They will smash you to the ground and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another within you because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. The Gospel of the Lord. In our opening prayer for this Mass, in celebration of St. Rose, we prayed that we would be filled with love and zeal for our faith, for the work of education, evangelization, love and zeal. And certainly our readings also highlight this important foundation for our spiritual life, for the fruitfulness of the church's ministry, for the building up of a community, our love and our zeal for all that is true, good, beautiful, sacred, holy, everything that comes from God and leads us to God. Love and zeal, very much at the heart of who we are as believers, what we do in regard to the church's mission, bringing the good news of the gospel to the world. And certainly when we think about the first reading today, the love and zeal for the old law as exhibited by the Maccabees, Mattathias in today's first reading, again exercising that holy zeal for righteousness. The book of Maccabees, the two books from the Old Testament, are a record of a time of severe persecution for the Jews. Old Covenant, very, very difficult time for God's people. Open persecution, martyrdoms, torture, all the very difficult circumstances. And yet, the lesson, of course, of the readings is that for those who remained faithful to God, they exercised that love and a zeal. 
love and a zeal for God's law, for everything that was sacred and holy in the old covenant. This is even before Christ came and gave us like the real grace of the new covenant. And in many ways, of course, a lesson for us because the church has always exercised her ministry within a context of, well, sometimes open hostility, persecution, rejection, certainly misunderstanding or a lack of a full awareness of the gift that the church is to the world, the gift that Jesus is to the world, the gift of the sacraments. All of this is familiar to us, thanks be to God. This is our source of peace. This is our source of strength each and every day. But for those who have not responded to God's invitation, who still live in a kind of ignorance or darkness for whatever reasons, it is up to us in our life of living the faith with love and zeal, it is up for us to be their missionaries, to be the messengers. God will use us to bring them to the light of that truth. Saint Rose, who we celebrate today, a beautiful example of one who in her love and zeal for the faith exercised a very fruitful ministry. She was born in France, came to the United States in the early 1800s as a member of the Society Congregation of the Sacred Heart who at that point were sending sisters from Europe here to the United States as real missionary sisters. This, of course, may be just a reminder for you. You know, when America was founded, it was not founded as a Catholic country. We were mission territory for all of those European countries like France that had been Catholic for centuries. So then there's like this new, the new world, and then, of course, the new country, the United States of America. And in that first half of the 19th century, there were very few Catholics here in the United States, and especially Western United States, which has just sort of been, you know, discovered and was just beginning to be populated. There were almost no Catholics. And so St. Rose and five other sisters, they came, and they came to Missouri. St. Charles, Missouri is where they founded their first convent, and their first school, the first Catholic school for girls, like west of the Mississippi River in the United States. Again, early 1800s. And then for over 20 years, St. Rose and her fellow sisters, they founded school after school after school at various parishes and churches. Again, real missionaries here in the United States of America. Again, you may not realize that we were mission territory uh, in that particular point in our church's history. So in that fruitfulness of her ministry, she not only passed on the faith, but established those schools where the faith would be taught, where the Lord would come to be known, where the cell where the sacraments would be celebrated. Again, a beautiful way in which one woman and the influence that she had is a beautiful inspiration. Her love and her zeal for the faith and for God's laws has left a lasting legacy. And so we honor her today as one of the great European missionaries that came here to evangelize the United States. And may we, in our own way, continue in our life of love and zeal for the faith. May we continue this beautiful mission, each in our own way. Pass on the faith. Teach the faith. Invite people to the faith. Welcome them to the church. And, of course, the church as the community of faithful, not just the physical building here on Baker Street. As we bring more and more people to this beautiful realization of God's love for them and of you know, their need for God's plan and God's laws to guide them safely to heaven, as we make this message more and more known and more and more deeply believed with conviction, we ourselves will be blessed in the strength of our faith. So through the intercession of St. Rose, may all of our efforts be blessed by God to pass on the faith, to give to others those beautiful gifts of love and zeal for God's laws and all that is holy. Trusting in God's goodness, let us now offer our prayers to him. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all bishops and priests, may God give them courage and wisdom as they stand up for truth and goodness. Let us pray to the Lord. For all government leaders, that they may foster a greater respect for human life throughout the world and for religious freedom, let us pray to the Lord. 
for all those struggling with their faith. May God's light and the comfort of his faithfulness fill their hearts and minds with peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For our parish community, may the Holy Spirit continue to strengthen us in saying yes to all that God asks of us. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, especially for all those being remembered in our monthly masses for the repose of the souls this month of November, that they may enjoy eternal rest and peace with all God's holy ones in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. God of mercy and love, hear and answer these prayers in accordance with your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the virgin blessed rose, we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits are pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy and Ton, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from it. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
communion antiphon. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Come out to meet Christ the Lord.
Let us pray. Renewed by partaking of this divine gift, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the example of Blessed Rose, bearing in our body the death of Jesus, we may strive to hold fast to you alone, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.